In 1825, the University of Virginia welcomed students for the first time. As in nearly all of the other universities in the United States at the time, every student that filed into UVA's classrooms that first day was a white man. In the 19th century, the majority of schools available to women focused on preparing them to be homemakers. UVA's founder, Thomas Jefferson, wrote that education for women has never been a subject of systematic contemplation with me. Yet as an increasing number of universities admitted women over the following decades, UVA faced pressure to follow suit. Some believed that UVA should be co-educational and admit both men and women. Others leaned towards creating a coordinate college, which would mean that a separate, smaller college for women would be affiliated with UVA and many believed that UVA was not a place for women whatsoever. The struggle between these ideas created much conflict and controversy in UVA. The efforts of the university to compromise among these ideas only postponed equal education, and the proposed compromises became less acceptable with every decade. In 1892, UVA allowed two women to take entrance exams. They were not allowed to take regular classes, but were tutored by faculty members. When the women passed the final exams, they received a pass certificate instead of a diploma, with the word graduate crossed out. In the 1910s, the Central Committee for the Coordinate College at Charlottesville, created by Mary Cook Branch Munford, helped introduce many bills in the Virginia House of Delegates and the State Senate, proposing women's education at UVA. Although Munford lobbied every day, none of these bills were passed. Men's colleges often faced low enrollment during wars and the Great Depression, and so they often turned to co-education in order to gain more students. However, UVA coped with declining enrollment by training soldiers and, some argued, by lowering admission standards. Women were admitted to the University of Virginia on a very restricted basis in 1920. A female UVA graduate student admitted under these strictures wrote that this move was a compromise action which satisfied no one. Women students had to be at least 20 years old and were only permitted to be undergraduates in the education and nursing departments. They could only attend after they had spent two years at another college. A few women were also allowed to become graduate students. Only 18 women went to the university that first year. Many professors and male students protested the presence of women at the university by trying to make life harder for the women. When women tried to participate in class, the men would stomp their feet loudly so the women could not be heard. There were no female dormitories on grounds, and most buildings did not have women's restrooms. Mary Washington College became UVA's coordinate school in 1944. Many observers believed that the coordinate college relationship was created to postpone co-education at the university. So UVA always felt like a second home to me. It felt like my family. I belonged here. Um, and then when I was 16 one day, I said to my parents, Mom, Dad, I've decided I'm not going to go away to college because I want to stay close to you. I'm going to stay right here and go to UVA and they got funny looks on their faces and they said we we need to go for a ride we drove a ways and we pulled into a small college that was very attractive but just from looking out the window it was smaller less resources there was no comparison i didn't quite understand until my father said in a pretty quiet voice he said this is where the girls go here. And that was the first time I understood that I was a second-class person because I was a girl. The civil rights movement and student activism in the 1960s helped shift public opinion towards equality. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 increased pressure for co-education because it prohibited public schools from discrimination based on gender. These social and legal changes caused men's colleges to become co-educational at a rate never seen before. In response to these pressures, UVA created a committee to discuss co-education in 1967. This news rattled some of the students, professors, and alumni of the university. One student explained, The Virginia undergraduate wants girls in the dorms, girls in cars, girls in bed, but girls in classrooms? Never. 
Others believed that the admission of women would endanger the school's honor code. I know the gals will pull some tricks that shouldn't be pulled and get the good grades. <laughs> In 1969, Virginia Scott, a high school senior in Charlottesville, Virginia, worked for John Lowe, an attorney and a recent graduate of UVA Law School. Lowe found out that even though Scott had excellent grades, she would not be allowed to attend UVA's undergraduate arts and sciences because she was female. It shocked me, Lowe recalled. I said, well then, we'll just have to take care of that. Lowe asked to meet with the UVA Board of Visitors, but they refused to speak with him. So he decided to sue the university. Working with another attorney, he represented Virginia Scott and three other women. In response to Lowe's lawsuit, UVA formed another co-education committee, led by Provost Frank Hereford. It included administrators, a graduate student, and an undergraduate student, Kevin Mannix. The majority of the committee decided to compromise, proposing that women be allowed to enter the university gradually, over 10 years, and limiting their enrollment to no more than 35% of the student body in 1980. Kevin Mannix, however, believed that this compromise was unacceptable. And I figured I was put on the committee to represent the student viewpoint and the viewpoint of students throughout the university. When I saw the majority of the report, they were calling for a 10-year quota system. They started out with the assumption that, hey, we should not reduce the admission of men in order to incorporate women. Let's just add women to the college admissions and let's have a quota system for 10 years. And after 10 years, We'll think about it. We'll take a look at whether or not there'd be equal admissions for women. And I thought, well, this is just plain wrong. And uh, so I decided to write a minority report to express the opposite point of view, which is, oh, we should understand that we should have co-education right away. But I also practically recognize that it would take a little bit of time to change facilities and programs to accommodate it. So let's have a two-year transition period. Kevin Mannix wrote a minority report stating that an attempt to prolong the co-educational process will only prolong the discrimination against women. In the long run, it will be the university and its students, as well as the women denied admission by a quota system, who will suffer. The day before the hearing, Mannix called Lowe on the phone to ask what he thought of the minority report. It was the first time Lowe had heard of the report. The university's co-education committee was legally required to share all of the evidence gathered from its deliberations with the judge. However, Provost Hereford, the head of the committee, did not include Mannix's minority report with the majority report. Lowe recalls that when the judge found out that Hereford had not shared Mannix's report, he became beet red and furious on the bench. He knew that important evidence had been withheld from the court. The judge declared that Virginia Scott would be allowed to attend UVA that very year. Later that year, the judges announced that they had accepted those demands in their entirety, with no compromise. 150 years after UVA was first chartered, the Southern School was finally forced to acknowledge that their compromises were unconstitutional. UVA was the last non-military, all-male public university in the United States to become co-educational. I think there were, what, 450 first-year women accepted in 1970, and we kind of came to the university not knowing what to expect, and I got the feeling they kind of weren't sure quite what to do with us. I didn't have any issues at all, but one of the things I do remember, actually a young man who came up to the Alderman Road dorms, and we were talking, and he looked me straight in the eye, and he said, do you know that women have ruined the university's reputation. And I thought, oh, sir. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson himself wrote that as manners and opinions change with the change of circumstances, institutions must advance also and keep pace with the times. By becoming co-educational, UVA did just that. The women and men who fought for co-education at the University of Virginia have allowed generations of women to gain an education equal to that of their male peers. Today, 55% of UVA's undergraduate student body is female. I think I speak on behalf of the more than 51% of the country when I say admitting women was the best thing that ever happened to the University of Virginia. <laughs> <laughs>